The health of our blood is supremely important because blood essentially carries things throughout our body. And without it, there's no delivery system to get things to where they need to be. And specifically, some of the blood markers give us information about oxygen carrying capacity, certain nutrients, how dialed up our immune system is, and if potentially we're dealing with infections. So the key markers that I'm looking at when I look at blood counts would include the RBCs, the hemoglobin, the hematocrit, and the mean corpuscular volume. RBCs stand for red blood cells. So it tells us how many red blood cells are available. And here, this is kind of like part of our decisions tree to say, do you have enough or do you have too little? And too little may put us down a path to look at, do you have a specific kind of anemia? Red blood cells have proteins in them that actually carry oxygen. And so without sufficient oxygen carrying capacity, you may be at risk for anemia. So if you have a problem with anemia, it can vary in intensity. In the most extreme cases, you may have trouble with actual breathing. You may be short of breath. In more you know, subtle cases, you may just have trouble with fatigue. Hemoglobin is a protein that has the capacity to carry oxygen. We need oxygen to be delivered to the entirety of our body to run respiration in our body. So hemoglobin can be out of range for quite a few reasons. Some of them are genetically determined, but they also could be low secondary to nutrient deficiencies that are things that are more in our control. So when I'm thinking about anemia, first I'm gonna look at the red blood cell. And if this number is low, then I'm gonna look at the hemoglobin and hematocrit. And if I see that these numbers are also low, then I want to determine what kind of anemia it is. I might look at the MCV, mean corpuscular volume. If that number is high, I'm thinking more B12 folate. If that number is low, I'm thinking more about iron. Hematocrit is the percentage of hemoglobin in the red blood cell. So it's telling us like how much overall as a percentage is there versus like how much protein is there in the red blood cell. Platelets are specialized cells that are involved in clotting and you want a good balance of these to be able to protect you. If you have a wound, for example, you want platelets to come in to make sure that they can stop the bleeding in a reasonable amount. We also don't want platelets to be too excessively active because this can actually increase clotting in a way that can be detrimental. So platelets are somewhat governed by vitamin K, which is a vitamin that kind of supports the platelet production, but otherwise this may be somewhat kind of constitutional, like where your body is generally speaking, and or if you're getting kind of upregulated due to certain infections or inflammation. If your platelet counts are really out of range, this is probably a sign for you to consult with a hematologist because typically kind of extremes on this are things that need to be worked up. So to support optimal blood health, we wanna think about those key nutrients that are balanced. So your iron, your folate, your B12. It's also good to think about generally supporting the immune system with vitamin D and balanced omega-3s. And here, as always, your lifestyle is really important. So thinking about sleep, healthy, balanced eating, and stress management can be important as well. You would look at the blood count, generally speaking, when you might be thinking about more acute infections. So you might look at a white blood cell level if you're thinking about somebody who has an acute infection to see, to trend that white blood cell level over time as we're treating an infection to see it come down. Alternatively, or on the other side of that coin, very low white blood cell levels, when they're not extremely low, where you're thinking about immune disorders, can be a sign of excess stress or immune dysfunction like autoimmunity.